Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this podcast. I'm Joe, and tonight we have with us Charles. It seems just a two-man show tonight. Oh uh, well, uh, we've got a lot to discuss discuss tonight. Anyway, so we've got quite a few trailers came out this week. Uh, first, we're going to be discussing uh, Dorothy of Oz, then Arjun the Warrior Prince, and then <laughs> I do not know the fr- I cannot pronounce the French title of this film, but it translates roughly into English as The Day of the Crows. Des yeah, I'm butchering the French, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Then we're going to be talking about uh, the animated film The Liar's Biography. Uh, again, the trailer came out recently. And then we're finally going to be talking about an announcement pick some uh, DreamWorks made not too long ago. Anyway, shall we begin? Yes, we shall. Okay. Dorothy of Oz. What do, what do you think of it, then? Why? <laughs> I mean, um, Dorothy of Oz has had a lot of stories during its run. It went through five different authors, at least. It's had its own different spin-off things. And it's like, why would you think um, Wizard of Oz needed a sequel unless you only saw the original film, in which case you read nothing else about the author's work. Mm. It's a, there was sort of a live-action, uh, The Return of Oz, wasn't there? And that had sort of the wheelers and all that lot. That was brilliant. That's one of my favourite films. Yeah. And then there was... Um, the thing is, it's sort of... It, it's got this sort of huge all-star cast behind it. I mean, it's got Martin Sheen as sort of the villain, the jester who just seems a little bit... I don't know. It, 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 he does seem like a cheap uh, wicked, cheap version of the Wicked Witch. I mean, he's still using flying monkeys, for goodness sake. Yeah, I can know I'm... But they don't really not intimidated by it. And then there's, um, but yeah, I, I just feel that it's sort of all holding off. They're trying to hold off as much as possible until they actually get the rights to being able to, for, I hope, this is sort of a wild dream, and I hope this is what they're doing. They're trying to hold off until they get the rights to actually do a full-length Wicked movie, because that would be fucking awesome. Yes, it would. I still want to see it in theatre. It's It's... Wonderful, it's brilliant, and I keep humming the songs in my head. <laughs> mm. You cannot get it out of your head. Never. How never. hard you try. I'm tempted just to get a pink dress and start singing popular as I braid your hair. <laughs> anyway. And make you popular. <laughs> yeah. I honestly wouldn't peg you as somebody who'd have, enjoy that song. It's catchy as hell. <laughs> yeah. But they're going for the same routine. I mean, the Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Cowdy line are somewhere in there. But again, like the other one, Dorothy's got a new cast to work with where they have um, Marshall Mellow. If you can't tell by that title, he's a giant marshmallow. Mm. Mm, marshmallow. There's the China Princess, who is a China doll who is... Very bossy, very pushy, but we're meant to get from the fact she's fragile and sensitive underneath. Then we have a tug. Not really sure what tug is exactly, other than the fact he has many multiple personalities and he sounds like the most interesting one. But, yeah, I, I still think it's a little bit... Hmm. Well, I, I think it could be interesting, but then I sort of noticed that it, it just doesn't really... Do it for me. Also, the fact that one of the main characters, it, and also the fact that Dorothy is voiced by someone from Glee, does raise a few hackles, if I'm honest. Well, since I've never seen Glee, I have no opinion on it. <laughs> I just object to it on principle. Anyway. Uh, but I actually find it quite interesting because um, it comes out in 2013. Mm. There is another film coming out in 2013, and it, it's called Oz: The Great and Powerful, where. Instead of a sequel, it is a prequel to how we follow and see how the wizard came to Oz and how he came to rule over it. Mm. And it's yeah. like two films out the same year about the same thing. Mm. Everybody's getting a big hard on for wizard, mm. the Wizard of Oz, it seems. Indeed. Uh, yes. Again, as I said, I think it's all leading up to a wicked, the Wicked movie. Anyway, 
The second movie is Arjun the Warrior Prince. So, um, for those who don't know, it's a tale. Of, it seems to be a tale from the trailer, even though it is all in uh, Hindi. So neither of us understood a word. Um, from what I gather from the trailer, it seems to be about a uh, warrior prince, about a um, uh, street, a sort of a street, a sort of relatively low down member of society, basically trying to win favour with the people, becoming a general and eventually winning the hand of a princess. That's what I got from the trailer. You um, I got the... that. I got... I got that impression as well, but then I actually did the whole research thing, and um, how off- while it doesn't say, huh? How off the ball was I? Um, well, I'm not too sure about his status per se, since um, I don't really know any of the actual titles or anything. But um, I'm guessing he's meant to be a he's some sort of he's trained in some sort of martial arts or sort of thing with or his bow or something. And out of all his brothers, cousins, and even his entire tribe, he's mastered this art at a young age, and this rivaling group, whatever, aren't too pleased about that because they want to be favoured to take over the throne of their king, whoever, who is dying. And I think it's something to do with these several families who each have a right to take over the throne. Mm. And it's just to see who they favour. Okay. But, um, yes, there is some sort of a peasant street going on because through something I'm not really sure how, there's this bet going on which um, the character's brother and I think even his family are bet into this one game, their version of some sort of poker gambling game, and they lose and he's basically sent into exile and that leads up to this war of him coming back. Mm. At least that's what I got from it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of animation wise, it does look quite interesting because it's all sort of done sort of relatively sort of in- interesting sh- cell shaded sort of way. Yes, I was fairly impressed by it, but I've never really seen anything by UTV Motion Pictures, and I was kind of surprised when I saw it was Walt Disney Pictures smacked on the studio title because I was like, really? Doesn't seem like the, it's. A, it looks like a very nice movie, but it doesn't seem like their quality of work. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I have a feeling it is going to. It is probably going to get. It, it is. It's already been released in India, so I have a feeling it is going to get a Western release at some stage. Mm. So yeah, this this could be an interesting movie, and I'm I'm going to be looking into it. I have a feeling it's going to probably going to be the um, whole ninety nine in uh, problem again. Which of those of you who which haven't didn't manage to catch the first episode we did, where we reviewed the ninety nine as a sort of general rule with partic- but particularly the animated series, which we generally sort of come came to the conclusion of interesting idea, interesting sort of concept and very very good goal behind it, but it's let down its by its own performance and I have a feeling that this is going to be the same. Uh, we can always secretly hope this will be their version of their prince of egypt so it might surprise us hopefully so yes but um yeah i'm kind of a bit skeptical about about this (laughs) if i'm honest okay um i yes anyway uh the third thing we're going to be talking about the day of the crows uh did you see the trailer I indeed saw the trailer, and I remember being very confused by it because it seems to start off with this child, kind of wild, like child who, if I'm being perfectly honest, kind of looks like um, Tom Pickles from Rugrats if he kind of got older but still never grew his hair out. <laughs> I kind of imagine, I kind of almost saw him as a little bit like Gollum, if I'm honest. He does look uh... very Gollum, Gollum-like. Okay, love child of Gollum and Tommy Pickles. Okay. So I got the thing that it was sort of um this sort of wild like boy with this other man who's taking care of him. They're just kind of living in the forest, jungle, whatever. Then it seems to be like a fish out of water story where they come to civilization because they're tending to the sort of, I think he's meant to be the father and he's got injured or something. Then they leave Then the trailer really confused me when I saw birds going by stealing things out of people's hands then suddenly we got these people with deer heads and it's like huh i have a feeling it's sort of um 
I've again, it's going to be it's one of those ones which was sort of a little bit you. I watched it and I was a little bit like, okay, it does sort of raise the eyebrows a bit, but I'm just think, also thinking maybe there's sort of a whole uh, fey child thing going along there because the little kid does seem fairly, I don't know, bright like. Okay, from the um, official sort of synopsis they've given us, in a cabin in the deep forest, a, fa- fa- a child and his father lead a wild and hard life in utmost isolation. The, uh, the child grows up f- fearing and admiring his father with the ghost, ghost haunting the fo- forest as his only companions, until the day he discovers a neighbouring village and meets a young girl there, Man- Manon. At her size, he s- discovers that love exists. From then on, he won't see. Ch- From then on, he won't cease his search for a place where his father loves, loves him for who. Uh, lo- for where his father's love for him is hiding. That's what I got from the synopsis. Right. It's- yeah. I'm not sure whether this is just some children's fairy tale that I'm just kind of missing the link, but I I don't really recognise it as anything I've heard. It's French. I have a feeling we can... Uh, it's not even French, actually. It is a, I have it right here, a Belgian, Canadian and Luxembourg film, but yes, they do all speak French technically, but it's mm-hmm. not a French film. Okay. All right, but it was directed by a, by um, a Frenchman, Paul Cabot. Uh, um, Sean Christopher Desert or something, something uh, like that. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's sort of, um, yeah, it sort of, it, it does just seem very. It seems very sort of surreal and art housey, if I'm honest. And it could be interesting to have a look at to suddenly get the whole sort of, the whole sort of hipster label we can get we can get with it but yeah it's kind of a little bit mm. um i'm not holding too much judgment over a trailer i've only seen once but i'm sure if i did research or something i will understand this world maybe i am writing it some sort it has some sort of essence of a fairy tale that we just want exposed to as a child so mm. i'm kind of interested just to see what it is i mean it, it's a woman with a deer's head i need to know what that was about <laughs> yeah Okay, um, now let's move on to a subject which I think is going to be quite interesting for us, and sort of certainly very different from what we very, we're used to when it comes to discussing things with this podcast. The Liar's Autobiography. This is an animated movie uh, using lots of different animation styles and with seven different studios about the um, autobiography basically relating the story of the autobiography of the late Graham Chapman of Monty Python fame. Uh, this is including is including all of the Monty Py- all of the sort of currently living Monty Pythons and it seems well I'm fairly torn on this one. Really? Part of me is sort of thinking when I'm sort of talking about this, part of me is wanting to make sort of all these Monty Python references and all the sort of really sort of have a good time with it. But on the other hand, part of me is also thinking, actually, this does seem honestly like a labour of love. I mean, how difficult would it is it to get all the Pythons back together? If you sort of look into any of the histories of Monty Python, they did not end on good terms. Um, John Cleese really hates Michael Palin. Um, but it, they, they, they just don't get along very well at all. And for them to just come back and just do this and sort of actually do the autobiography of their, t- of their dead friend, it seemed yeah. really, really sweet. And also the animation is really, really interesting as well because of the fact it's all different art. It's all very, very different art styles. Like there's some claymation, there's st- some uh, very stic- there's some very sort of staccato style stuff. There's some stop motion, sort of, stop motion with sort of photos in it as well, there's all this stuff. There's CG. There's some CGI stuff in there. It's all very, very interesting, and all sort of looks fantastic. But I just, but the sort of critical sense of sense of me is just thinking, well, just from the trailer, it just seems too active. It just seems too doesn't seem to be very focused. And I'm I'm just really torn on this. I just feel like all of these sort of 
uh, there's part of me which is just this will be fun part of me is thinking this is really really sweet and really really lovely of them to do it part of me and part of me is thinking well this may not work and it'd be an absolute tragedy if this didn't work because of the fact this is Graham this is Graham Chapman's autobiography this is his work being put onto film and it's very rare to see a autobiographical uh, autobiographical piece be put onto film and I'm sure it is going to be uproariously funny because again it's Graham Chapman of Monty Python fame here but yeah I'm I'm torn on this what do you think I don't know. Personally, I'm I'm just looking forward to it. Because, um, yes, it's seven different studios, seven different sketches, different styles. You do have these people who aren't really friends come together out of respect for this one person that they all knew. But I can see them really putting a lot into this, and I'm, I'm fairly confident you'll like one of the sketches. Yeah. So... I- I'm very optimistic today, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I do remember this one um, bit from, I think it was um, Barry Cryer's autobiography when he was talking about uh, Graham Chapman's autobiography. I do remember this one bit very vividly. Is um, He wrote, John Cleese was rather miffed about the whole thing because he always wanted to say fucking church. <laughs> and, I do, and it's just... And if you sort of see the trailer, you see the sort of um, actual live footage of... Graham Chapman's eulogy with John Cleese and there's just this moment where it sort of and it sort of nicely sets up the trailer where it sort of he goes we are here, gathered, ladies and gentlemen we are gathered here today to pay our respects to Graham Chapman who has been a def- dear friend to one and many of us I'm paraphrasing here and then he says and on behalf of everyone I'd just like to say good riddance you unlikable bastard <laughs> and he just sets up the trailer really, really well. And it just really, really gets to the sort of core of why people like John Cleese and pe- why people love the Pythons and so on and so forth. And it just really, 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 really hammers home and sort of really, really poignant and so on and so forth. And I just, I hope, I really, really would love this project to succeed. But I've always got to feel that it may not. I mean, it may be because of the fact I have. we have yet to see how all these different art styles work together. We have yet to see how all of this stuff works together. Part of me is thinking maybe it's going to be sort of based on different eras of his life, which is what it seems to be from the trailer. But maybe it's something different. Maybe it's sort of, I don't know, different stories of his life is detailed in different art styles. I don't know. But, yeah. I'm hoping for the best, but like all things, I'm worrying about the worst. <laughs> and from that rather depressing note... Forgive him. Yes. <laughs> Forgive me. It's something which I just would like to see work. It's something he cares deeply for. Mm. From that rather depressing note, we move on to DreamWorks and their rather ambitious little project. Very ambitious. They recently dis- uh, signed a new distribution deal with uh, Fox, and uh, they've decided to 12 full-length animated features in three and a half years. Uh, these will include uh, the movie. This will include How to Train Your Tra- Dragon 2, The Penguins of Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda 3, and How to Train Your Dragon 3, as well as some original. Uh, as well as some original uh, IP, IPs and ideas. Now, um, Charles, do you want to mention anything about it? Because I think I'm going to save my thoughts to the end. If you can't see how... Um, what was it? Ten projects again? It's twelve. If you can't see how twelve projects, feature-length films, in this short span of time then you must really have your expectations set way too high because this can easily be rushed, this can easily go sour. I I just don't see how they're so confident that they can do this in this amount of time. Yeah. And it's just... From... I, 
I have faith in Pixar. I have faith in DreamWorks because of the fact they have they've delivered some good stuff. Yes, I'm always hating people bashing on DreamWorks saying, oh, they didn't do that much good work. They did tons of good work. I loved The Prince of Egypt. I loved The Road to El Dorado. I, actually, I love everything back from their 2D animation. Those were some of the best films I ever watched, Spirit and Sinbad. And they've done good stuff, and sometimes they haven't taken themselves seriously, but I don't feel like they deserve the reputation people keep lashing out at them for. I do love sort of some of the more recent films as well. I do love I do have a soft spot for Kung Fu Panda. And I do love I, I did enjoy Megamind immensely. Yes, I love Kung Fu Panda, love the sequel even better because Kung Fu Pie fighting Peacock. It was it was wonderful. It was brilliant. And some of these projects I really want them to take care of. I mean, I want a good sequel to How to Train Your Dragon. I don't think anyone wants to see a film, a feature-length film in cinema labelled The Penguins of Madagascar. I don't think anyone cares. Mm. And I would like to see some of the more of their original ideas because I want to see them get more titles out and really show that they do not just rely on one, two good films they have out. Well, I have a feeling, speaking of which, I have a feeling I know why they're doing this. Mm. They've lost. They finished with the Shrek license, and because yep, they thank finished goodness. With Cash Cow, which was Shrek, they've got to try and find something new. And so they're throwing all of these different music, these all these different movies out, and sort of all these different seeing. Okay, what can be? What's going to be popular? What's going to be in the next one? I do like the idea. Some of the ideas down here, like there's um, uh, B O O O, Bureau of the Other Worlds. Otherworldly operations, which could be quite interesting. I'm kind of thinking it's probably going to be end up a little bit like the X Files for kids. Uh, there's also the Mumbai musical, and I have a feeling this might be quite interesting because they might sort of try and do a whole sort of um, Western created Bollywood musical, which could be very, very fun. But other ones would just make me feel a little bit. I don't know. I mean, you have stuff like Happy Smeck Day. I swear Smeck is a swear word made up by Red Dwarf. But yeah, essentially it's sort of essentially it's a mixed bag for me. I'm kind of sort of thinking, how are they going to pull? The, I, I I'm with you. I'm sort of thinking, how are they going to pull this off and maintain quality? But yeah, Smeck Roy Smeck was an American musician. Otherwise, it is known as either to be retarded or slow-witted, or not a full-blown smooch, but to a little more of a peck on the cheek. Or to laugh like an idiot. Fair enough. <laughs> it has a lot of meanings, actually. I'm still going through them. Mm. I'm also now thinking about how could they possibly... How could they possibly do a, se- a third sequel to Kung Fu Panda? They've okay, kind of... this one just got a whole lot disturbing. I'm um, yeah. one to touching us someone else's... The t- okay, I'm going to stop reading this now. <laughs> stop, <laughs> I'm stop, it. stop there. We want to keep this a family show. How are they going to do a? How the fuck are they going to do a K- Kung Fu Panda three sequel? Well, they kind of left themselves off on as a sequel with the whole. Well, it turns out the pandas are alive, and the father is some sort of psychic who says, "My son is alive." But that was, even the sequel itself confused me because wasn't the whole. They, I think they even said this in the commentary of the actual film, but when they're trying to get the message across, your birth, your heritage means nothing. You yourself are capable capable of becoming something great no matter what your roots are. And it seems like they're really building Poe up as a hero in these next few sequels. And it's like his heritage does mean a lot, doesn't it? Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I'm still. I think that apart just from... kind of contradicts the first movie. Apart from anything else, it's sort of. Apart from anything else, it's kind of all setting up. I don't know because the fact they've kind of gone through all the possibility of sort of Chinese native fauna to come as come up as villains. I mean, I don't know what they could possibly do next. I mean, they've done all of the stuff. What they haven't done in the movies, they've done in the animated series. They've done um, owls. They've done scorpions. They've done mantises, they've done foxes and so on and so forth. I'm just thinking about what they could possibly do next. Hmm. And it's the same with How to Train Your Dragon. I mean, 
as far as I'm concerned, that movie kind of ended fairly definitively. And then yes, it, but there was a long, long series of books, so even one from titled "How to Be a Viking." Yeah, but yeah, well, I'm not, kind... not all the books were at their highest point, but you could get some good sequels out of it. Out of it but really, I don't think they even follow in the books in the sequels anyway. No, they're probably not. I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit worried about i'm kind of a little bit sort of skeptical about this I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's sort of it does seem a little bit like quick crap we don't have a decent pay a long last, lasting paycheck quick throw anything out uh, i want to see some of these ideas happen and i really just want them to take good special care of them and I really want them to shine but I just don't see jumping this many projects at the same time your work experience is going to blend into whichever project you're working with at the time and it's going to be very distracting hmm. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like saying when you write something, you're, the way you write is reflected by the mood you are that current moment which is why I need to reread my old work before I get into what I'm doing currently so I keep that mindset mm. yeah and so yeah and with that ladies and gentlemen we want to be miss you do <laughs> yes I, I, we want to be optimistic I want to be optimistic about this I want to be sort of like all these movies I, I suppose what they could do is they have different teams working on each one that's so probably they, what they're doing. Yeah, mm. they're planning the sort of they're planning, they've planned the more recent they've planned all of them, and so they start animating a script. They sort of started animating and scripting. They sort of started scripting. I don't know one of the ones down down the line. They're sort of animating one already. Animating one already. Another group are animating the one after that, or starting to animate that. Another one sort of another group are starting to do sort of concept character concepts and so on and so forth and it just builds up and builds up and builds up but yeah I'm a bit sceptical on that and so ladies and gentlemen as the bottle as the uh, bottle of cider of time pours down the throat of inevitability I think it's time we end the show and so it's good night from me and it's good night from Charles and we'll see you all next time goodbye Ta-ta.